Thank you. Success. Success is defined as the achievement of an aim, a purpose, or a goal. And when it comes to success, I look across this room and I think, you know, there's a lot of bright minds here in the room, and uh, I know you're going to be very successful in life. And when you think about business and you think about entrepreneurs and starting a business, maybe, uh, you, if you're like me, you think that the longer I work towards my goal, the more successful I'm going to be, right? But unfortunately, according to the U.S. Small Business Administration, actually for new entrepreneurs or new businesses, that after the first two years in business, only 75% of those businesses are still operating. And when you reach five years, it drops to 50%. At 10 years, it drops to 33%. And at 15 plus years after starting a company, less than 26% of those companies are still in business. So when I look at that, I also think that as I look across this room, am I saying that 75% of you are going to fail? No, I'm not saying that. What I am saying though is it reminds me of something my mother used to always tell me as I was growing up. One of her favorite sayings was that figures don't lie, but liars can figure. Now, I'm not saying that the Small Business Administration is lying, but what I am going to say is maybe it doesn't paint the whole picture. And with those entrepreneurs that uh, may have started out and some of those businesses that failed, what they don't show in these statistics is that sometimes maybe they failed on their first try, but they went on to create an amazing company going forward. Or maybe two entrepreneurs, that were maybe each company was doing okay, uh, but neither were doing great, ultimately came together and created an amazing company that went on for great success. So I do want to take just a moment, though, before we move into talking about success, I'd like to talk about failure. So... Has anybody here in the room ever heard of the name Michael Jordan? You can raise your hand. <laughs> sure. Okay, great. Well, I was hoping you had, uh, because actually, he's probably the only basketball player I know. But uh, uh, with Michael Jordan, in his career, Michael Jordan missed over 9,000 shots. He lost almost 300 games. And 26 times Michael Jordan was called upon to take that game-winning shot and miss. But Michael Jordan attributes his success to all those failures. Because he said that he learned from the mistakes he made, and that's what actually has made him one of the biggest and greatest names in basketball history. So... Let's learn from our mistakes. Failure is not the end all. Failure is just one step along the path towards success. And I can share with you that, again, I took over my family business at a relatively young age. I was 22 when my father died. That was a long time ago. And uh, at the time, we only had one funeral home. And by the time my wife and I sold our company about a year and a half ago, we had seven funeral homes, uh, cemetery, crematory, and we were privileged to serve over 6,000 families a year um, among our funeral homes. We had grown to being the largest family-owned funeral home in Florida. But along that way, I had some great successes in my career, and I had some big failures in my career. But the one big thing was that we kept pushing forward, and during that time, I learned that really when it comes to success, it's all about the four P's, as you see there on the slide. I'm going to share those with you now. You have purpose, you have plan, you have passion, and you have persistence. So you must have purpose, you see. 
you have to develop a plan, you have to act with passion, and you must practice persistence. And so let's talk a little bit about purpose. When it comes to purpose, many times people think that we're talking on a more task-driven way with purpose. And what I mean by that is that we think that the purpose of today's meeting is for you to come in and learn X, Y, and Z from different business leaders. Or that the purpose of a particular college class is so that we can achieve A, B, and C. But I'm here to talk to you today about a different kind of purpose. It's a kind of purpose that can change your life. It's a kind of purpose that can change the direction of a company. And it's the kind of purpose that can truly change the way you interact with each other and the world. And so as you look at purpose, and as we talk about purpose, keep in mind that amazing things can happen if we focus on purpose. And uh, so the purpose that I'm talking about is what's going to end up being your guiding light. It will drive you towards success. It will help you keep you on track and keep you from getting distracted. And ultimately, it will help you to improve your life and the life of others. And you've probably heard of a great leader, uh, thought leader, and a great author, uh, business coach. Uh, his name's Michael, or Simon Sinek, excuse me. His name's Simon, Simon Sinek. And he wrote the book, It Starts With Rock. And so, he talks about purpose. And in purpose, he says that your purpose is really your why. And what he means by that is that that's your core belief. It's what drives you. It's what drives your business, and it's what helps you to succeed. And as he says, unfortunately, most business leaders and most businesses don't think about the why. They only focus in on the what and the how. What they do and how they do it. But you really have to focus on the why. The reason we have to focus on the why is because the why is what really helps us to be successful, but it's also what makes other people believe in what you're offering, believe in what you're doing. It gets buy-in. And ultimately, people buy from you because we're all, anyone in business is in sales. And so ultimately what happens is that why is why people buy and why they buy from you as opposed to your competition. So I'd like to take and share with you a little story that Simon Sinek shares in his book uh, that talks about a company that either didn't know their why or perhaps had forgotten their why or their purpose. And it was the turn of the 20th century, so in 1900, the wealthiest families in America were the railroad families. Uh, they could move product and people across the United States in a fraction of the amount of time that it took to get there by horse and buggy. So they were very wealthy and very much in demand at that point in time. But like in every business, what ends up happening is competition comes along, or innovation comes along. And ultimately that happened with our railroad companies. What happened was along came the airplane. Now, these families had more than enough money that they could have bought the airline industry. But they didn't. And why didn't they? Because they were railroad men. They thought that that would put it all they didn't, they didn't understand their why and forgotten what that why was. Had they looked at it that they were in the transportation business instead of the railroad business, it would have been a no-brainer. They would have understood that buying the airline industry would have simply been an addition to what they already offered and would have made them extremely successful. I don't know about you all, but I can't remember the last time I took the train from here in Los Angeles when I had to go out to the West Coast uh, by plane. So, again, you have to understand your purpose. 
you have to believe in your purpose. But as I said, if you also, if you understand your purpose, it will also keep you on track. By having a purpose, or having your why, it acts as a filter. And so when you get into the business world, what will happen is things will be coming at you from all directions. You'll have consumer issues, you'll have employee issues, you'll have government regulations, new trends, vendors will come to you with everything that's the latest and greatest since sliced bread that they think that you should start offering to your clients. And so if you just don't know what you're truly supposed to do, what's going to happen is you're going to go in a hundred different directions. And most likely it will end up costing you thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in errors and mistakes. But by having your purpose well known and being grounded in your purpose, you can filter those things through that filter and know what you're supposed to do. You can narrow it down to the solutions that are right for you and for your company. And in speaking with Mr. Jones just a little while ago outside, he was sharing the vision for St. Leo's University and some of the things that they're doing and how everything they do, they're, gonna, they're running through a filter, the filter of what's best for the students here at St. Leo's and how is this going to improve their time while they're here at St. Leo's. So every industry can live by a filter and know what to do. The other story I wanted to share with you that kind of talks about a company that understood their filter and understood their why is that of Southwest Airlines. When Herb Kelleher started Southwest Airlines, he wanted it to be the low-cost airline because he wanted every family in America to be able to travel by plane. So he wanted airline travel to be affordable for everyone. And so after several years of great success with Southwest Airlines, along came someone from their marketing department that came in and said, Mr. Kelleher, you know, we've done some studies and we've talked to some people, we've surveyed some of our passengers on some of our most popular flights with Southwest Airlines, and we've asked them if there was anything we could do to make their flights any better. And so they came back and told us, oh, well, you know, that weary business traveler on Friday night when he's heading home uh, from a long week away from home, love to have a meal on the plane, or love to have some of those other amenities that other airlines have, right? Well, as Mr. Kelleher listened intently to his team telling him their ideas, he came back to them and said, because he realized that all of those things are gonna do what? They're gonna drive up the cost of the ticket because someone has to pay for it at some point. So he asked him, he said, will this make us a low cost airlines or will this make us the low cost airline? And of course, had they instituted all those things, it would have made Southwest Airlines just another airline. But instead, they remain committed to their purpose. They remain committed to their goal. And so Southwest has continued to be one of the most profitable airlines in the country. And so I strongly encourage you to try to define your goal. It could be your goal or your purpose in business, and it could be your purpose in life. Because these same principles work whether we're talking business or we're talking life. Now in my business, I had the privilege and the pleasure of dealing with thousands of families over a career of about 35 years as a funeral director. And during that time, I helped many parents bury their children. I helped many children bury their parents. Brothers and sisters bury each other. And, and uh, hundreds of other families and relationships during that time. And although I had been in business for quite some time, it wasn't until my wife joined me in the funeral business from an outside perspective that we actually took a different look at the funeral business. 
So I had served families and offered funerals for years, but when we truly finally decided on what our purpose was, we realized that we were about more than just selling you a casket or selling you an urn. Instead, we were about helping families heal during one of the most difficult times in your life. And so our purpose became that we were about where the healing begins. Whether that was before the death occurred, during the time of loss, or long after the death was over, we were going to help families along that grief journey and help them to ultimately reach peace. And by doing so, once we embraced that, what was so amazing was initially we had to, we had to preach that to our staff every day for probably a year to remind them that this is what we're doing, this is what we're about. But after that, the staff started to see it, and started to believe it, and started to buy into it. And then our staff actually felt we were about where the healing begins. And then ultimately, our clients felt that we were about where the healing begins. And finally, our community felt the same way. And by doing that, that's what allowed us to be able to have exponential growth and end up being the largest funeral home in Florida. The second P is plan. As Winston Churchill says, he who fails to plan is planning to fail. You have to have a plan. Your plan is your roadmap to success. And your plan is, think of it as your GPS navigator, okay? Uh, we're blessed to have two children, an 18-year-old and a 21-year-old. And I can tell you that both of my children probably never traveled farther than a few miles away from home without putting into their Google Maps where it is that they want to go. But the interesting thing that I found about Google Maps is that if you don't know where you want to go, Google Maps can't help you get there. So you need to know what your ultimate destination is that you want to achieve. And if you build that plan, that will keep you on track. Because the one thing I can tell you in the world of business is that it's never going to be a straight shot from where you start to where you want to get. There's going to be curves, and there's going to be bumps, and there's going to be pitfalls and roadblocks. And if your GPS navigator is like mine, it's going to tell you that it's recalculating the route. I don't know if you've ever heard that. I've heard it many times. I must make a lot of wrong turns along the way. But ultimately, it will get you to your final destination. And that destination we want is to be successful. I also want to share with you a little visual analogy here using this rubber band. So assume that this, this side of my hand here, this is the goal. The goal is success, right? That's where you want to be. Or whatever your goal may be. This is where you're starting. And that the more you stretch that rubber band, the tighter it gets. The more tension is on that rubber band. Unfortunately, what happens in business and in life, all too often, people are not comfortable dealing outside their comfort zone. They don't like tension. They don't like stress. So what do they do? I guess the same would be true in a class, correct? So what do they do? They drop back down because it's comfortable. But in the end, they fail. So I encourage you to embrace that tension that's on that rubber band. Stretch it as hard as you can stretch it. Live outside your comfort zone. The reason being is because when you're in that discomfort zone, that is truly where growth occurs, and that's truly where achievement comes from. So, live outside your comfort zone. Uh, also, uh, I hate to do this because I show you my age. I can't read anything. But, uh, also, as my high school football coach used to say, uh, Coach Haper, no pain, no gain. So if we want to make a gain, we got to suffer a little pain along the way to get there. Our next P is passion. You have to act with passion. 
Passion determines your effort. The more passionate you are about something, the more effort you're going to put in. And so, this is our daughter, Bailey. She has always been the dreamer in our family. So ever since she was a young girl, she saw Phantom of the Opera. And at that point in time, she decided that was what she was going to do. She was going to Broadway. And so she had determined her purpose in life. She ended up building a plan to do it. Cost the mother and I thousands and thousands upon thousands of dollars, I'm sure, if I add up all the lessons and things that she's gone to. But she has put it all together. And in a few short months, she will graduate with her BFA in musical theater. And I know that if she continues to live by her purpose, continues to follow her plan, and continues to do it passionately, she will be on Broadway. For me, as a funeral director, I knew on all those families that I served over the years, I knew that I was the right person to be helping them. And how did I know that? I knew it because I was the best funeral director ever. Even if it was only in my mind. But if you believe it, you can achieve it. And I can share with you some facts behind that. But first, as my wife always says, you have to visualize your victories. And so for me, I would tell myself all the time that I was the best funeral director ever. I'd look myself in the mirror and I'd tell myself that. Or I'd tell myself I was going to reach some particular goal. But you know, visualizing your victories means that the more powerful the image, the greater the potential of opportunity is for you. And it's actually a scientific fact. A very good friend of mine, Mark Fanciera, is a partner with the Pacific Institute. They study the mind. They study the effects your mind have on the results you get, good or bad. And as he always says, the human mind cannot distinguish between the subconscious and reality. So the more vivid you can make that picture in your mind, the more emotion you can put into that picture in your mind, the greater the chances reach reality becomes. And let's look at it this way. Think about a baseball player, right? You're getting up to the back. You're getting up with your back, you're going to hit the ball. But most professional baseball players, long before they get to the plate, they've already visualized in their mind that swinging of the bat. They swung that bat a thousand times over in their mind. But beyond that, they don't just take the image of the swinging of the bat. They also know that as they swing that bat, they listen and hear the crack when it hits the ball. They also listen to the roar of the crowd as the ball goes over the fence in you know, the outfield for that home run. And then they can sense the great pride and feeling that they have as they round the bases and head for home plate. Yet they haven't even stepped up to swing the ball, swing at the ball but they've built that in their mind so that when they get up there, they know what they're gonna do. And there's actually a scientific formula for this. It's I times V raised to the E equals R. So it's like being in algebra class again. Um, but I times, e, I times V raised to the E equals R. And that stands for imagination, times vividness, the more vivid you can make that image in your mind. Raised to the emotion, again, hearing that ball get hit, you know, hearing the roar of the crowd equals reality. So as you go forth, go forth with passion because we want to make sure that you're all successful. And 
The other part of that I will share with you on passion is that unfortunately, oftentimes in life though, it's not just you that needs more to be successful. Many times you'll have a team back there with you, working with you. It could be your fellow employees. It could be your staff. It could be teammates, whatever your role may happen to be. But there'll be others that need to believe in what you believe. And they need to feel your passion so that they have that same passion going forward. And so a lot of companies are now coming up with ways of finding how to get their teams to buy into that same passion. And so I'm going to use Ruth Chris Steakhouse. Okay? Ruth Chris Steakhouse. They teach their employees to sell the sizzle. Okay? Now, they're not just talking about the sizzle of when they bring out your steak to your table on that plate that's heated up to 500 degrees. But instead, they're talking about when you interact with your guests that come to the restaurant, whether they're coming for a birthday or an anniversary or just a nice night out to dinner. They know on average they have about two hours and in that two-hour time span there, that you need to perform at your best to create the most amazing experience for them during that two hours so that this becomes a moment of a lifetime for the guest. And so, as you all go forth from here, remember, go forth to sell the sizzle or whatever that next great idea may be um, and do it with passion. And finally, I want to share with you the last P, and that's persistence. As that quote says there by the unknown author, I didn't come this far to only come this far. This happens to be, uh, well, actually, this persistence, I meant to tell you, actually, persistence um, builds confidence. And so, this happens to be our son, Josh. Josh is a Division I swimmer from Florida Atlantic University. So our son swims the 200 free, the 500 free, and the 200 fly. Those are his events. And Josh swims, though, on average, 15,000 yards a day, six days a week. That's 90,000 yards. He does that 50 weeks of the year. That's 4.5 million yards he swims in a year. Now, to put it in terms that you and I can probably easily relate to, because, hey, 4.5 million yards is a lot of yards. But if you divide that by 100, that's 45,000 football fields he will swim in a year. I don't know if I could even walk 45,000 football <laughs> fields, much less swim 45,000 football fields. But why does he and all of his teammates do that? They do it for one thing and one thing only. They do it for their conference championship meet. Yes, they have some small meets along the way and things, but they don't even count them. They don't even keep track of who won and who lost. All they do it for is their conference championship. So at the conference championship, Josh swam 900 yards. The 200 free, the 200 fly, and the 500 free took him 8 minutes and 12 seconds to swim all three of those events. And uh, why do athletes put in all that effort for 8 minutes and 12 seconds? It's because it builds the confidence and the stamina for when times get tough. And they will get tough. Whether it's in the pool or whether it's in the world of business or just life in general. And so, putting in all that training and all that effort gives them that courage to carry on when things get tough. When they're in that pool and they don't want to swim another yard, but they know they got to compete and they got to keep going. Or when you're in the business world and you don't want to get out and go to work in the morning. Hey, I own the place. And I used to roll over some mornings and be like, man, I really don't want to go to work. But you know what? I got out of bed. I went to work. And so, again, persistence is vitally important to the success in life and in business. And, you know, it's said that salespeople 
typical salesperson, and again, as I said, everybody in business is in sales, but the typical salesperson will quit one phone call for success. And why is that? Because they've forgotten that defeat is only temporary. Just beyond failure lies success. Yet they gave up too early. And as Jim Rohn, motivational speaker, says, in life, we have, we all have to suffer one of two pains. The pain of discipline or the pain of regret. The difference is the pain of discipline weighs ounces. The pain of regret weighs tons. So don't live in a world of regret. Put forth that effort and keep pushing forward. When my wife and I bought out my brother and sister from our family business in 2010, uh, when they left, my wife and I had about a week's worth of cash in the bank to carry on. We determined that we had to do $18,000 a day in sales, 365 days of the year. Every day, we had to meet eighteen thousand dollars just to break even. And uh, I don't know about y'all, but eighteen thousand dollars a day in sales in the funeral business is very difficult, especially in Florida. So uh, uh, that's a lot of work. And there were many times that we had people say, ah, you know, maybe you should just throw in the towel. You know, that's a lot of work. You know, or when I went to, uh, when I went ninety days without a day off. That was a lot of work. But you know, we pushed forward because we had to. And the way we chose to push forward was we took on what was called a burn the boats mentality. A burn the boats mentality is when the boats land on the shore, you turn around, you burn your boats. The message it sends to your team is that there's no going back. We can't retreat. The only way we've got to go now is to go forward. And so we persisted, and we stayed there, and we kept pushing forward. And so when times get tough, push forward. Burn your boat. Know you can't go back, and keep on going. And I want to leave you with this final quote from John F. Kennedy. Efforts and courage are not enough without purpose and direction. It could also be said that passion and persistence are not enough without purpose and a plan. So now you have all four of the P's, and you're blessed to be in an institution that I graduated from. You're blessed to be here with wonderful teachers that are giving you the skills you need to go forth into the world. So when you do go forth, go forth with greatness and achieve much success. Thank you. Thank you.